The more it rains, the dirtier the water gets because just it carries more sediment, more sediment, more oil, more trash. I'll be the first to admit that I know little to nothing about Ward 8. It's too far away, I've heard it's unsafe, and I just never went there. But that has one big problem, environmental racism. Today, I decided to travel to Ward 8 to see what it looks like and the environmental racism and how it's affecting the community. Follow me along on my journey. I headed out to meet up with Nathan Harrington, the project manager of Ward 8 Woods. He took me to one of the three areas managed by the group. So here we are, this is Oxenburg Parkway. I followed Nathan to the woods where he showed me all the trash and invasive species that were there. So as you can see, we have this kind of routine litter from people who walk by or drive by, um, throw it out the window, and then we have um, actually dumping yeah. where people bring stuff that they want to get rid of and they bring it here because they figure this is just kind of a no man's land where no one will care. Not only has the group cleaned up Ward 8, but it has also created jobs for local community members. The, earlier this year, I was able to get uh, grants from the DC Department of Energy and the Environment and the DC Office of Planning to hire a crew of Ward 8 residents um, to do this work. When we advertised an opportunity for five people, we got 75 applicants. Why is this area a product of environmental racism? According to census data, 9 out of 10 residents of Ward 8 are people of color, and 37% live under the poverty line. It's a pattern of environmental racism where um, pollution is sent to where the poor people are, um, and the efforts to maintain uh, and clean the environment are concentrated in the places where the most financial and political capital is. After leaving Nathan, I hopped in an Uber. My Uber driver just happened to be a former resident of Ward 8. She asked that I did not disclose of her identity. When it snowed, um, that'd be the last area that they would clean up. Um, trash everywhere. People didn't come and, you know, come and recycle all the trash. It's, there every day you have to get up in the morning and go to bed at night. Polluted. Environmental racism is not the only problem affecting the ward, she said. But they sell drugs because it brings money and it can provide more for their families because even the, at the school system, you're not getting the proper education. So it's like, what do I do? Local advocates like Nathan not only help preserve the environment, but are also creating a better, brighter future. Vlogging for SMPA 4180, my name is Kelly Del Percio.